You see the product, now take action. Miracle Food, suitable for all ages, the perfect cleanse and reboot, a product that helps promote a healthy immune system and a great anti-inflammatory. Don't just take my word for it. Sandman at Viral Hip Hop News strongly suggests you go over to ChakraDoctor.org and try out the incredible product, Miracle Food. Let's go. Um, from being uh, accountable. Right. Let's talk about the um the breakup now. Correct me if I'm wrong. You guys had like a dispute over royalties, and you guys went in two separate directions or three. Can you talk about the breakup, you know, of the group and what happened there? Well, um, yeah, the breakup of the group was uh, initially due to the fact that we never received any royalties from Sugar Hill Records ever, even to this day. Um, we're still in litigation with Sugar Hill Records. Uh, over uh, over royalties, uh, unpaid royalties, unpaid publishing. And it's a perpetual situation because the music perpetually is played. It's being played all over the world. It's sampled there, you know, it's used in films, commercials and what have you. So um, it's constantly and perpetually generating revenue. And so, Sugar Hill Records is constantly, or the the officers, or um, surviving uh, family members of the Sugar Hill Records uh, estate are still collecting revenue uh, revenue from it, and they are um, they're not reporting the revenue to us, and so therefore we're not getting paid on uh, quite a bit of it. We we did get paid some but there's a lot of it that we didn't get paid for. And uh, moving forward, uh, since they're still not reporting to us, there's uh, quite a bit that of undiscovered revenue that they have, that they continue to make that we, we haven't been, we're not privy to yet. And so we initially decided that um, that was not a good situation for us to uh, be in a sustained you know, circumstance in. And so we decided that uh, we were going to uh, leave Sugar Hill Records and go to another record label. Um, we argued amongst ourselves, amongst the group, and half of the group decided that um, the best thing for the group would be to stay with Sugar Hill Records and eventually our celebrity uh, would supersede uh, any any wrongdoing that uh, we would we were undergoing and uh, they would have to initially uh, uh, renegotiate our contract and then we would get a better deal with them uh, that was Melly Mel um, Scorpio uh, well and at the time cowboy rest in peace he was on me and Flash's side me, Flash, and Kid Creole, but then um, they coerced him, the other side coerced him and gave him some money, and so he changed uh, his position and wound up riding with the other side, and so that's how the group split up. Uh, my faction of the group was called Grandmaster Flash, and we signed with Electra Records, um, and uh, we went through the standard protocols that uh, that every artist that signed to a major record label goes through once we signed with Electra, meaning we were given a recording budget uh, mm -hmm. when we didn't we didn't know what our budget was when we were at Sugar Hill, um, and so if you don't know what your budget is, it's very difficult to ascertain uh, how much you owe when it's time to to you know for the money that they shelled out on your behalf to be recouped. So uh, as a result of that, it was like, damn, well, we, how can we know that uh, the figures that they're giving us are accurate and, and actually represent what mm -hmm. uh, the, the money that they shelled out on our behalf prior to us you know, recording uh, this album? And so uh, that was that was one of the major underlying issues of why we wanted to leave Sugar Hill and why we did and why uh, and, and Melly Mel and 
Scorpio and Cowboy State, and um, and then me, Flash, and Kid Creole um, signed with Electra Records and got to experience what uh, what the majority of artists who are signed to major labels experience. Yeah, I was going to say you kind of got the not I don't want to say the introduction, but y'all got the nasty side of the music business. Like firsthand, you were the original nasty side of music business artist. Right, raping you records. Yeah. <laughs> how did that? How did that? Like, okay, so transition out of that, you, you get. I'm sure you leave Electra and you deal with what you deal with. Talk about how that affected your mental psyche and what you did and dealt with after after that. Well, um, <clears throat> one of the things that happened to us while we were signed with Electra was um, we felt like we recorded. Uh, uh, a pretty good album um, when the original group uh, reassembled on Electra um, and, and we recorded uh, an album called On the Strength. We thought that was a decent album and um, we were expecting that radio would, uh, would, would play our music. Um, and so what happened was radio didn't play our music and um, uh, there was a, well, initially, New York radio started playing our music. And then mysteriously one day, um, our music stopped playing on the radio before it got to get to rotation status. Right. They were just like, like testing it on the air. Um, and they were testing it pretty frequently and it was getting a decent buzz. And then um, magically, mysteriously, one day, it completely stopped getting played. And so um, there was uh, a program director that worked for uh, 98.7 KISS FM, who, um, who I thought to be a friend and um, who we would hang out uh, occasionally, me, this person, and um, uh, Russell Simmons. And so, um, you know, it never dawned on me at the time, but later it came back to me that um, uh, Russell uh, was paying different people who were connected to him that were in radio um, in various cities not to play our music. So Russell tried to black boy you? No, he didn't try. He did it. It was very, it was very successful. Wow. Yeah. Um, and from my understanding, there was a list of artists' names that were given to Hot 97, and under no circumstances uh, should these artists' names, um, there should these artists' music, be placed in any type of rotation. And I heard that our names were definitely one of on that list. And I believe it because we had a show on Hot 97 <laughs> called the Mike Check Show, and um, which was the number one show in its time slot. And um, uh, and even though we had the number one show in its time slot, the, um, the person who was the boss at Hot 97 at the time uh, lied to us and led us to believe that if we went in the studio and recorded a new record, that um, they would play it in heavy rotation on Hot 97. Mm. So we went in the studio and we recorded a new record. They didn't play it at all on Hot 97. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so the, all of those things were uh, uh, definitely helped to contribute to the to the um, oh, and then and then the changing of the guard, um, you know, in hip hop that happened uh, 1989, 1990. You know, 1989, PE released uh, "Fight the Power," mm -hmm. but then uh, 1990, 1991, uh, gangster rap, yeah. you know, uh, came, and so as a result of that, um, that changed the narrative. That changed. Uh, uh, raps flagship representation you know uh 
gangster rap became the new flagship, uh, uh, I guess, uh, sub genre of rap music. You know what I mean? Of 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 you know the the standard rap music, and then we had this spinoff. You know, we 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 had a few spinoffs initially before there was gangster rap. We had um, we had uh, remember um, uh, uh, Helter Skelter, and you know those guys, yeah. uh, Grave Diggers, and you know so um, they had hardcore. Um, so hardcore came, and then and then we had. Uh, you know, uh, uh, PE, and then we had the antithesis to PE, which was NWA, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then uh, after NWA, it just got progressively worse, progressively, progressively derogatory, progressively negative, progressively violent, progressively um, uh, 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 glorified, glorifying drugs. Um, and so all of these things are what led to where we are today. Mm -hmm.